Hello and welcome back to some more BitBurners. So in the last video, I covered the get ships portion of the give me money script. Um, hopefully my explanation was very clear. Um, if you have, uh, I guess, any uh, questions, uh, feel free to leave comments down below and uh, I'll make sure to answer uh, some <laughs> all of it whenever I have time. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to I'm going to be covering the get potential targets. Um, so this is a somewhat of a, I guess, somewhat of a complicated function by itself. Uh, so hopefully my explanation is <laughs> very much more clear this time around. Um, so jumping into the get potential targets, uh, the first thing we do is we grab all the nodes within our network. And as, uh, as mentioned in the previous video, basically what this get network nodes function does is that it uses depth first search to retrieve all the server names within our network. Um, and then after all retrieving all the server names within our network, we then filter out the ones that we can penetrate and the ones we can hack. We also exclude the ones that uh, I guess is our home server and also the, uh, the our purchase servers and the reason for this is because it doesn't make sense to make our home server or the purchase servers as the target for our hack we can grow commands and I'm pretty sure it's gonna throw errors if we try to do that anyway um, so moving into the can penetrate function so I think I already covered this in the previous video so but I want to cover it again just so that it's much easier to reference uh, but basically what the script does is that it grabs all the number of cracking scripts that exists within our home server and then it compares it with the number of required ports that need to be open for that server and then if we have more cracking scripts than the number of required ports that needs to be opened then it means that we can penetrate that server all right so moving down here to the next one so the can hack um, so can hack is uh, I guess something that's very important because um, it caused quite a lot of issues in the first iteration of the launch fleet script uh, basically um, Just because you have the number of required hacking scripts to I guess open the required ports for the server um, That doesn't mean that you can run the hack weekend and grow commands on that server uh, Sure, you can run the the scripts on those servers, but you can't run the hack weekend and grow commands on those So you can't have them as the targets um, So basically what we do is we grab the players hacking level and the servers required hacking level and then we just compare them so if the player has much more hacking level than the server's required hacking level then it means that we can run our hack weekend and grow commands which means that it's not gonna throw errors when we launch our attacks so after retrieving all the list of uh, hackable servers so every single server that we can uh, open ports so uh, can penetrate so open ports to and the servers that we have the required hacking level to then we try to prepare all the hackable servers and th this is just done for a sanity check and the reason why I do this is because um, uh, in the past there's a lot of uh, bugs that's uh, occurred when when servers haven't gained root access so I just want to make sure that all our targets on all our ships have that root access so I go through every single one of our servers hackable servers and then I ensure that all of those servers have root access uh, and again the get root access is um, uh, basically just checks whether this we have root access if we do then we just return otherwise we check the number of required ports and if there's any uh, ports that needs to be opened then we penetrate the server so we go through every single one of our cracking scripts and if the cracking script exists on our home server then we just run that script on that server uh, and then after opening all the ports then we nuke it so we get the root access all right so moving down to these um, I guess the chained commands here um, so the first thing we do after retrieving all our all the names of our hackable servers is we map them to the node information so we convert them to a whole bunch of objects um, so the get node info is a lot smaller than the previous um, launch fleet script so I only extracted the ones that we're gonna need uh, so I first retrieve all the maximum money 
uh, by using the get server max money function. And then after that, I then define the server and then the player objects uh, and then pass those two objects to retrieve the hacking chance. So this hack chance uh, basically symbolizes the success rate for uh, stealing money from the servers. Uh, and then we calculate the revenue yield by multiplying the maximum money of that server by the number of chance we have. And the reason why we calculate revenue yield like this is because um, basically the hacking chance determines the amount of money you can actually gain from the server. So let's say that you have a server that has a thousand dollars and your success rate is around 90 percent. Uh, it means that um, in theory you can yield up to nine hundred dollars mainly because ninety percent of the time you can steal some of that money um, and then uh, the and then we just return the object with the the node uh, the server name the maximum money and then the revenue yield all right moving down to the next line here the dot filter basically what this filter does is that we only filter out the ones that has money in in the server um, and the reason is because we, we can only steal uh, money from servers that has money in the first place. Um, so we on, only want to exclude the ones uh, exclude the ones that doesn't have money. And then the next one is uh, the sort function, which basically just uses a comparator uh, um, to sort the array using a certain field. And I think this is where um, people get confused a little bit. Um, so get comparator is it's basically a concept that allows you to sort uh, sort specific items on an array using a certain field or some sort of custom value. Uh, basically, to explain this uh, very very simply, um, it's very complicated. It's a very complicated concept, but I tried to simplify it. Um, so let's uh, open up Miro for this. Uh, basically, you can think of comparators as uh, some sort of timeline, uh, some sort of linear thing. Uh, it's basically a function that returns either a negative value, a positive value, or just straight up zero. Um, and you can determine how the comparator sorts the items in the array based on the conditions. Um, so for example, if a greater than b is results in negative one and a less than b is results in one it means that uh, for every number uh, or value that's uh, really big uh, it means that what this first line means is that if the number is really big then shove it to the very left side of the array so for example given this um, given this array here of numbers uh, what this uh, comparator function does is that it's going to shove all the big numbers on the left and then shove the small numbers on the right. So um, it's going to do 7 here and then 5 next and then 4 next uh, and then 4 next and then 3, 3, 2 and then 1 like that. So it's going to sort it from the biggest to the smallest. So that's what the first condition does. So uh, again, the, you can determine the behavior of the comparator by looking at the conditions. So if, uh, if uh, you see a condition like this, it means that um, big numbers need to be shoved on the left of the array and small numbers get shoved on the right. And if you do the opposite, so like this, so where you see uh, big numbers uh, shoved to the right and small numbers shoved to the left, it means that it's going to sort the array from smallest to biggest um yeah so we can we can see that in action by i guess let, let's open up vs code just to show you guys um that uh, i'm not bsing you <laughs> um so if if we look at that in um i guess like this so we define the number here Basically, um, using the theory that we just um, mentioned, I, I just mentioned, then um, what, what I said was if the condition is uh, like this, if A less than B return, I guess, negative 1, so the smallest 
gets uh, shoved to the left uh, of the, I guess the that timeline or that linear thing. Um, and then if A greater than B, return one. So everything that is really big gets shoved to the right. Otherwise we just return zero. So uh, the return zero doesn't really matter or anything. Um, then uh, we sort the number and then if we run this, uh, basically what this one will do is that it's gonna shove all the small numbers to the left, shove all the big numbers to the right, and then whatever's in between is just zero. Uh, and then if we do the exact opposite, uh, where we go num.sort, and then if we do the exact opposite where, um, we return one, uh, so all the small numbers go sh get shoved to the right, and then if a, and then all the big numbers get shoved to the left, then we basically just sort the number in from biggest to smallest. So that that's exactly how I understand um, how comparators work. So from that theory, uh, basically what we're doing here is that using the field that uh, using the field so revenue yield uh, basically we're um, shoving all the big numbers so all the ones with the servers with the bigger uh, revenue yield to the left and shoving the small the, the servers with the smallest um, uh, revenue yield on the right it means we're sorting the array from biggest to smallest so yeah, so that's that's how I think of comparators. Um, if you have any, uh, I guess, simpler way to explain comparators, please <laughs> I feel free to leave a comment um, because I, I'm very interested to see how uh, uh, other people would explain it. But um, by looking at a whole bunch of tutorials online and all that stuff, um, it definitely confused the heck out of me when I was um, studying comparators in uni. But uh, I think that way is probably the simplest way to think about it. Um, but anyway, so after sorting that um, all the hackable, hackable servers by, uh, I guess, the biggest revenue yield to the smallest revenue yield, then we return that. Um, so yeah, so that's how the, the get potential targets work. So it just returns a list of targets. So a list of servers that's sorted by, um, I guess, the revenue yield or, or the max money. And the biggest, uh, the server with the biggest revenue yield or the max money gets targeted first. And then the one with the least gets targeted last. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess in the next video, I'm going to be showing how to retrieve the requirements. So the requirements is also another very complicated one because this one uh, retrieves all the strategies and all the delays, which is, I guess, the, the key to making all of this launch fleets work. So I'll see you guys in the next one.